मैडम मैम वेरी वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून मैम मैम एडिबल मैम आज पट्टन नाम में कीले कीले मैम हाउ आर यू मैम माइक कीले माइक हेलो हेलो ए माइक हेलो 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 हाय यस मैम गुड आफ्टरनून सर हाउ आर यू यस मैम फाइन मैम व्हाट आर यू मैम आई आई वेरी फाइन सर सर संदेश सर गुड आफ्टरनून संदेश सर यस गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून थैंक यू यस सर आफ्टरनून मैम सीता मैम वेलकम फॉर द National conference, ma'am. Rita, ma'am, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, ma'am. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you, ma'am. I can hear you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. And now it's time to listen to the invited lecture of Dr. Rita John, Professor and Head, Department of Physics, University of Madras, Hindi Campus, Chennai. And may I request Dr. Murugan Gupten of Chennai to introduce the chief guest and chair this session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, ma'am, yes. sir, Muru Kothar sir is coming, ma'am, or two or three minutes wait, ma'am. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay. Sir, your session is. सर और सेशन चार पर्सन 3:15 टू 5:00 है सर आपको 
start. Sir, sir, uh, not audible, sir. Uh, sir, I'm... I'm... <coughs> now, can you hear me? Oh, okay, sir, okay, okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Sir, audible. Hello? Can we start, sir? Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Madam Rita Chan, Madam, is there? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> madam, sorry, madam. Sorry for the delay. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, absolutely no problem. No issues. There is a small uh, <laughs> argument uh, went on outside. So I passivated. Okay. I know, sir. So shall we start? You are principal of Pachay Pass College. No? <laughs> so such <laughs> things are inspected. Okay, okay. Okay, madam. sir. Uh, Rajesh, can you start for Lama? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, can you, sir? So we request Rajesh. you to introduce our chief guest, Dr. Rita John, and chair the session, sir. Yeah. So I'm very uh, happy to be the chairperson of this uh, session, wherein uh, a very renowned scientist in the field of theoretical physics, especially uh, the field of uh, DFT, uh, Dr. Professor Rita Jan, uh, the head of the Department of Theoretical Physics, and Madam Rita Jan is a very well-known person in the field of theoretical physics, and she is now doing AMN service to this University of Madras in the Department of Theoretical Physics by imparting the very strong foundation in the field of theoretical physics and overall physics. This is very well observed by the people by knowing about the result outcome of the net examination the, of the theoretical physics students. Every year, Madam is producing number of net candidates from, the, from her department. This is done in a cooperative manner with the students. She is a very interesting, sincere, dedicated person extracting work from the students very cleverly, admitting them in such a way on their own, they solve the problems. And by solving the problems, they are gaining a good knowledge in the field of the physics. So by the way of doing this, Madam has produced so many net candidates. Uh, I, I, I can say that it is around 100 students she has produced in the past five years. Not only this, Madam is involved in curriculum designing in the field of physics for Tamil Nadu Science uh, State Council for Higher Education, University of Madras, and many other universities, and as well as for the various autonomous colleges in the in our uh, several universities. Madam is known to me. Uh, we met each other in the Board of Studies meeting recently. 
the ideas that she is giving are totally towards the development of the students community a marching towards the success that is success in the field of physics by attaining net examination clearing net examination and she has uh, uh, sorry i am very sorry to uh, I'm, i couldn't have time to go through the awards that she has uh, received uh, due to my work schedule this is and uh, she has uh, uh, awarded so many received so many awards and uh, sorry to say i couldn't mention and uh, i now welcome uh, professor uh, rita jan madam uh, to deliver her lecture thank you i uh, sorry i am very happy uh, to be a part of this uh, program i am thankful to the management of the kamaraj college the head of the department of physics and the the webinar organizers thank you thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank can you can i uh, can i take uh, start uh, professor yeah, yes madam yes madam yes, yes okay uh, so very good afternoon one and all present uh, who have connected with us through this uh, zoom meet i would like to thank uh, professor muruga kutan for introducing me and of course we work together in various boards of studies and uh, um, uh, i should uh, appreciate uh, my colleagues and uh, uh, department students uh, for the results he mentioned so in the last 5 years 60 of them have cleared net and gate and that has been the trend in our department uh, and so thanks for mentioning that and uh, i would be uh, uh, grateful to all the audience if you could uh, and you know or focus towards the enhancing the quality of physics and uh, tamil nadu and especially our regions are known for physics and that is the reason as professor mentioned we are focusing in giving standard uh, quality physics in every level my god's grace i had an opportunity to work for school education also for plus 1 and plus 2 i have uh, i i was the uh, domain uh, expert and i could uh, give the strong physics foundation in plus 1 plus 2 book which you would have seen and also uh, for bsc and certain colleges and msc and also tonsi common syllabus uh, that's how it is and i have also written a book uh, solid state physics published by tata megregal and uh, which is uh, prescribed in many colleges and universities and ugc has also recommended this book uh, included this book in the book of uh, uh, study for the stu uh, students uh, solid state physics and so at this with this uh, 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 note i would like to profusely thank uh, the organizer dr rajesh who was very particular that i should be uh, a part of this uh, e conference uh, and uh, he has been meticulously planning and organizing this and i would like to congratulate him and his colleagues and the management of kamaraj college thutukade for thinking of this a uh, very prominent and very uh, needed title the national conference on advanced research in material science so advanced research usually it used to be uh, research in advanced materials and here he is calling it advanced research in uh, materials and uh, maybe and uh, they are interlinked with each other and that's how it goes and uh, so uh, uh, so uh, somebody says i need your solid state physics book it is available in amazon solid state physics by data micrack Uh, you can take it uh, uh, or you can you can call me later so uh, fine so let me share my screen and go for my uh, presentation uh, for the day just give me a minute uh, let me share my screen and this is the title i would like to concentrate 
engineering materials for novel applications a theoretical approach and uh, so this is what is the title i would like to talk the even though this is the title broader title material investigation guided by theory and computation actually the talk or the, the procedure uh, all the results that i'm going to show will be able to give you a glimpse on how the theory and computation are be essential in today's investigation especially with the, the with the advancement in material science and uh, the specific title i would like to take is engineering materials so this a theory and computation guided uh, research is helping us to engineering the material so engineering materials uh, simply means uh, we would like we generate or we formulate a material which would suit our applications and therefore you tell the application you coin a particular application be it photonics be it spintronics be it electronics be it space material be it bio material you first to tell what application you would like to, and then you try to search for making a material with a suitable application and that is possible with theoretical approach aided by computational prescriptions and therefore i'm going to just take few examples and tell you how it is very powerful in getting this uh, 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 material investigation uh, uh, you know valid for our uh, context to today so the objective of my presentation is to highlight the significance of theoretical approaches using computational methods in predicting materials for promising technology so Uh, the, the technology is advancing today we should understand it is the physics uh, the physicists who are contributing irrespective of the area it could be crystal growth it could be mm, a nanotechnology or it could be any area you take a, a physicists are contributing towards the development of technology but unfortunately the science especially the physics contribution is not given the due weightage when it comes to industry so i would like to tell you why i say this because i um, when we look at the technology we are all familiar with the instrumentation for example computation for example so now are uh, they talk about various models this model of equipment and that model of equipment and they say this model of equipment which uh, is uh, very useful now or which is uh, having these are the important features which are added which the previous model is not having so this is how they say but you should understand the model the difference would have been using a simple physics principle where they might have added a, a particular gadgets in gadget into it but when you see uh, the amount that is uh, collected or the, the the sales because of that small introduction is enormous so the contribution is using the principle of physics or the laws of physics or the advancement that we people are publishing but the technology is gaining and the so much of importance is given to the people who make use of it and therefore the uh, we need to give uh, importance and we must be able to tell our students especially why we should do such uh, sorry no, no. so why we i am i am audible yes madam yes madam okay uh, and so we need to tell our students uh, why the doing uh, uh, research in basic physics is important uh, and diversification to other fields is okay but not at the expense of physics and uh, so that is what i am going to insist so the density functional theory and spin polarized density functional theory results are going to be presented and this is the outline of my talk the, why there is a need for theoretical computational research and density functional theory i'm not going to discuss in entire theory but a simple overview i would give and then i am going to just give two important areas the promising research outcome one is band gap engineering in semiconductors another one is impact of spin in half metallic materials the band gap engineering i'm going to show you the basic results and you should be able to appreciate extending it 
this is what is fundamental research but this is what is advanced research and this is what is promising for the technology development today okay so then i would give the conclusion so now to start with what is the uh, um, need for the theoretical or computational research so uh, the need for theoretical and computational research so the need for theoretical or computational research is because of the problem with the solids so when we take the solids in the material science uh, fundamentally we deal with the solids so when we see that uh, and the atoms come together forming the solid through any one of the type uh, types or uh, type of uh, uh, types of bonding so once they bond what happens the solid is formed and if there are free electrons moving around we have to think about solving for getting the total energy and the total energy is the fundamental or the base that is the live wire of theoretical research why i say this theoretical physics is like a, a, a pulse of a human body so if with any disease you just to go uh, to any doctor immediately they check your pulse because any kind of irregularities that is seen in your body that is uh, uh, so immediately the pulse will will be able to tell the doctor that something is wrong with your body so uh, similarly the total energy is like the pulse for the material where you just calculate the total energy and the total energy will be able to tell or in fact it is the energy calculation in the reciprocal space which is theoretical so that calculation um, if you could do it will tell you about the material it will tell you whether it is a metal whether it is a semiconductor or insulator and a little more investigation will be able to tell important properties like uh, uh, whether it is uh, suitable for space application what kind of uh, mechanical uh, properties these materials uh, exhibit so uh, uh, material uh, properties are important for the investigation optical properties are important for the investigation so how we can extract it is possible using the relationships total energy is linked to with the various properties so kramer's kronecker equation relates the total energy with the optical properties then pv occurs or uh, equation of state equations they connect total energy with the mechanical properties so like this we will be able to extract of whether structural properties mechanical properties or any other property you will be able to extract from just 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 so we we will be in a position to extract from the total energy calculation so that is what is basically engineering the material with the help of what you have seen in the uh, um, dispersion curves so uh, that is why it is a many body problem when you do this energy calculation you solve your equation so it is a microscopic level and therefore you need to depend on the schrodinger equation so the schrodinger equation would be able to um, do it but it it needs the potential term minus h cross square by 2m plus v psi is equal to e psi so first is the kinetic energy term the second is the potential term in the potential term if you know the potential correctly you substitute what you get is the eigen value called the energy total energy of course eigen function so now you if the potential is completely known so in quantum mechanics we talk about completely solvable cases they are completely solvable because you are able to get the total energy this is a total, uh, total energy correct because the potential is completely known be it um, uh, 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 hydrogen atom hydrogen atom potential is completely known and a uh, uh, rigid rotor harmonic oscillator potential is known but in solid in materials investigation too many atoms coming together millions of them coming together and millions of electrons interacting with each other electrons interacting with the ion core ion cores interacting with each other this is what is the picture of any solid irrespective of the application you propose and therefore potential it cannot be accommodated using simple coulomb because it is a cumbersome term so 
this is called many body problem so you need to search for other so how to give a Am I audible? Madam, Madam, now audible. Yes, yes, ma'am. Ah, okay, because uh, the feature it says so you should uh, uh, unmute and that's why. Thank you. So let me just go ahead. So now this is what is the dispersion relationship. So yeah, uh, if you see the CK relate, I'm just taking from MSc level just this one picture. So in uh, a free electron theory, energy as a function of K, K is the momentum vector in the reciprocal space. So we calculate energy in the reciprocal space. Here the potential is considered constant. In the next theory development, they included not all the interactive potentials, but only with the interaction of the electron with the ion core through crystal refraction. That's the only change in the potential. But if you see the energy curve, it shows such a vast variation where you, the origin, the, the, there seems to be a gap in the energy curve. Otherwise, it was a parabolic curve with increasing K. But in certain K points, there is a gap. And these are the called uh, um, yeah, the zone boundaries. And then the chrony penny model. Chrony penny model uh, uh, using quantum prescription, introducing block functions uh, gave this model and explained the uh, periodicity. Now, these are all the slight variations. So, so yes, solid potential is considered. But ultimately, yeah, today what we have is this. Uh, this is the diagram. See the difference in the, the, all of them are energy calculated as a function of K. But in every theory, the difference came because of the uh, change in the potential. Just give me a minute. Let me just adjust. Okay. So in every theory, the change came because of the potential term. Therefore, potential term is important. So potential, if you correctly give, and it is a one-dimensional model. This is a three-dimensional model. Now, you may be wondering what is this. So I just want to tell, these are the bands. Just before giving uh, semiconductor descriptions, I will be able to tell you a little more about uh, these uh, bands. And, uh, I, and now I'm just saying the density function theory is the one which can take the, uh, the energy dispersion. Uh, EK is the energy dispersion closer to reality. So just by looking at it, we are able to uh, uh, take or in, interpret the properties. So now let me uh, uh, go in detail. So the density function of theory and overview. So the thanks to Professor Walter Cohn. Uh, he's the Nobel laureate uh, who won Nobel Prize in 1998 for his uh, density function of theory. And when I met him, uh, he he uh, I was introduced to him as a person who does density function theory for the PG lab. And he he in fact told me he's aspiring to bring in uh, more development, fine-tuned density function theory. He was talking about uh, the correlation functionals uh, which need to be considered and and so on. Uh, that was uh, he was 92 years old at that time. But in, uh, uh, he after a year he passed away, so he is no more. And we are grateful to him. So I want to acknowledge him. So now coming to the outline of density functional theory alone. I don't want to give number of e equations. And um, uh, he, uh, when we do density functional theory um, uh, workshops, I would do uh, this uh, the this uh, particular theory in detail. So right now, just permit me to uh, uh, to include only the outline of the theory. So density functional theory is an extremely successful approach for the description of ground state properties of metal semiconductors and insulators. The success of density functional theory not only encompasses standard bulk materials, but also complex materials such as protein, carbon, nanotubes. 
And the main idea of density functional theory is to describe an interacting system of fermions. This is the point which I should uh, insist. So it talks about interacting system of fermions, electrons, via its density and not via its many body wave function. Here is the difference. Usually when we solve Schrodinger equation, all of us know the moment you say you are dealing with microscopic calculation, the answer Schrodinger equation is the, is the procedure. You cannot adopt a classical over there. And therefore, what we do, we simply say Schrodinger equation. So in the Schrodinger equation, ultimately what we get is the eigenvalue, which is the energy, and the wave function sign. And all along, we will be talking only about uh, the wave function. So we take the wave function, normalize the wave function, and uh, use that idea for further uh, charge density calculation and, and further interpretation. That is how we do in, in Schrodinger equation. The everything, all uh, that we discuss, uh, whether it is completely solvable cases or it is talking about the periodic potentials or you talk about particle in a box or potential well, yeah, tunneling, everything we were having the idea of wave function psi only. But in density functional theory, there is a slight change or rather a major change. We, no longer the wave function is going to be the term. The, uh, it is going to be the charge density of the electrons. It's not wave function or the total wave function, but it is density of the electron. And you get this charge density. We call it NFR, there will be a term. Uh, so that from the wave function only. So instead of having the number of electrons, wave function, calculating total wave function, here we take the total density of the electrons and the whole interpretation and the talk is going to be in terms of density. That's the reason density. And what is the functional? Functional is something like function of a function. So if uh, y uh, is a function of uh, x, so y is equal to f of x. But if the, uh, so for every time you substitute x, you get that y value. But if that x itself is a function of something else, say p. And then we can say y has a functional dependence because it's a function of x, which in turn is a function of p. So here we, what we do is energy as a function of electron density, which in turn is a function of the wave functions and, and the uh, position r. And that's the reason we get the term functional density, functional theory. So we are not going to take a uh, wave um, function, but density, and therefore d is there. We are having uh, energy, which has functional dependence on our functional theory. This is uh, uh, just a small uh, uh, thing for uh, students in case they are participating. So now, next thing, I am just giving uh, glimpses. For n electrons in a solid, which obey the Pauli's principle, they repel. So in a solid, you may have n number of electrons. We, you, they obey Pauli's exclusion principle. So multiple interaction, it is not only electron-electron interaction, ion core interaction, electron, but they do have, they do obey Pauli's. So spin-spin interaction is there, charge interactions are there. And therefore, in this case, when we try to yeah, interpret the, the, the multiple interaction, that's why they, we talk about correlation. So even though they have a, a light spin, we know unlike spin will not uh, 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 repel, but, but they do not uh, attract to so much that they stick onto each other also. There is something which keeps it at a particular distance. And that is the one which we need to take into consideration. The one which keeps them at a distance, the one which is not allowing the electrons of opposite spin also not, not to stick onto each other is policy exclusion principle. Now, that is the reason we talk about a kind of a well understood behavior of the electrons. They do have field interactions amongst themselves. And therefore, we need to talk about exchange. That's why we add one more term in the density functional theory, which is called exchange interaction or exchange and the correlation 
function within the or exchange correlation potential within which i am going to show in few minutes in the e equation so now in one more point here the basic variable of the system depends uh, only on three so i'm just giving only the points important points related to dft so when we write uh, n number of i'm just uh, uh, let me put it in words suppose you have 10 electrons uh, which which is a system for you then what you would do each one of the electron you call them psi one of the first electron you give it a give it a spatial um, association then you say psi one at r1 psi one r1 psi two r2 so what you do you can assign first electron's wave function which is at r1 second at r2 third at r3 but all of them form the same system of 10 electrons so or you can say the wave function of a system of 10 electrons and so what you say the wave function psi which is total wave function psi of the system of 10 electrons as a function of r1 r2 etc up to r10 that means 10 of them are having specific spatial representation from R1 to R10, but a psi of 10. Now, the density function theory looks at it differently. So when you try to solve this kind of a wave function as a function of 10 coordinates, each R will be having three. Uh, so R1 will have X1, Y1, Z1. R2, you have three coordinates, X2, Y2, uh, Z3. So 10 number of Rs, that is R1 to R10, multiplied by 3, 30. So the total wave function you calculate as a function of as a function of 30 variable, 30 as a function of 30. So now the density function theory says, suppose you want to calculate a simple case, which has only say five electrons, that itself you need to solve as a function of, so I have 15 variables, which is cumbersome. So the idea, this is what is paradigm shift in density function theory. That's the reason I'm just telling you this. The paradigm shift here is, Put uh, all the fellows, all the electrons together and call it that is the system. And all of them are in the same location, say R. Therefore, the total wave function as a function of R, which has only three uh, uh, spatial coordinates, X1, Y1, Z1. So you solve it, be it for 10 electrons, be it for 100 electrons, be it for 1000 electrons. That wave function psi is calculated as a function of just three variables only. So the degrees of freedom is reduced. So this is another paradigm shift in the density functional theory. First thing I said, remove a function, but give functional dependence and call it in terms of density. Second one, you reduce the coordinates and you solve it only for three variables as a function of that's the second paradigm shift. And let me go ahead and give another important point in a few minutes. And this is what is the uh, uh, Quonsham equation. I'm just, uh, uh, so this is called Quonsham equation. So the energy can be obtained by solving the Quonsham equation. So I have not given description of theory. I just jumped to the last equation, which generally the computer solves. So now this VFR is interaction between an electron and the collection of atomic nuclei. This is another thing. You pull out all the atomic nuclei and make one electron interact with the rest of the atomic nuclei. How? Density functional theory would be able to explain. So you can uh, refer uh, in my book course. I would have given little outline, little more detail. But um, I, 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 I want to tell. I have told in many conferences that we would do extensive density functional theory workshop, and we are just waiting for the lockdown to get over. But anyway, uh, I would definitely do that uh, for the youngsters, for PG students. Uh, and those who aspire to understand this differential theory. So now, Hartree potential, what is it? So now in the solid, I said electron uh, nuclei interaction, electron electron interaction, Hartree's potential. He gave an idea how you can pull out one electron from the bunch and call this one electron is uh, interacting with the rest of the charge cloud. And when, so that is how you calculate for every single electron. And then this is the important one, which I said, exchange correlation potential. So they have 
something more than these two potential which is called exchange correlation this exchange correlation potential calculation is a very important that depends on the nature of bonding of the solid so your semiconductor yeah, uh, and uh, insulator heavy atoms involving the materials uh, and a strongly correlated spin unpaired spin and a strong correlation existing they accordingly you should put so many of the uh, many of us use quotes and in certain in quotes you cannot just use the same thing uh, same exchange correlation potential for all the solids you need to have some understanding on that it depends very much depends on the interaction especially from the bonding and therefore uh, this is important so for every single electron you set this equation and solve this one electron equation get the uh, uh, okay n number of electrons n number of energy equation and then you can find the total energy this is how ponsham equation is solved in density functional theory and in this case just a minute i i think i said what is exchange correlation functional already and also just to complete this while density functional theory in principle gives a good description of ground state properties um, and the practical application of dft are based on approximations for the so called exchange correlation potential so exchange correlation potential describes the effect of pauli's principle and the coulomb two things spin spin interaction charge charge interaction these two are the one which is exchanging so that is taken care of exchange correlation term so this possess the ex, uh, possessing exchange correlation potential mean uh, uh, that we solve many body problem exactly which is clearly uh, not feasible in solid so exactly this is what is our uh, xj this is how they behave this is the exact potential that's not possible at all therefore approximations are definitely involved that's why the systematic way of um, uh, proving self consistency and also uh, trying to uh, optimize all the parameters systematically and endorsing k mesh and taking appropriate uh, all prescriptions need to be very carefully followed otherwise your density function theory results wouldn't accept within wouldn't uh, uh, you know correlate with the experiment of course certainly there will be the ground state level and the uh, certain uh, uh, percentage of error is allowed but we need to be careful uh, to hold on to a certain prescription given in density functional thing okay fine now and i i already talked about it so let me uh, now let me with this outline of density function theory which i am going to use in showing these results band gap engineering in semiconductors now all the results i'm going to show you oh, we have solved ponsham equation and we are getting the energy dispersion curves in the reciprocal space drawing energy versus k and using them to find out i extract the properties of material that is the skill over here so now combustion equation you need to write the codes so computation is also important and uh, theory com combination with computation the underlying mechanism is schrodinger i mean sorry quantum mechanics and that's uh, how we go ahead so sunny and few band gap in reality i just wanted to show in reality all of us are familiar with this so the moment you say semiconductor conductor insulator we say this is a valence band and there is a conduction band if there is overlap then uh, the, it is a metal or a conductor if the top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band are having a small energy gap then it is a semiconductor and if the top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band have uh, the large energy difference then it is insulated that is what is the picture yeah nobody would have told us what is along the x axis because the x is supposed to be momentum vector k this is possible in the reciprocal space so this is only schematic understanding but in reality if you take the reality is the band structure so this is not the picture this is the picture 
So this 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 is the energy. Then so uh, this is the Fermi level. This is dispersion using DFT, and you can see below uh, these are all bound states and these are all conduction states. Uh, or the, this portion we simply took it like that, and this is the portion. And this conduction portion is this. Now you can see the overlap happening at the Fermi. So it is a metal. Now. I want to tell you here, each one of the curve here represent a particular electron. So far in uh, our discussions at the PG levels, we just take when the, when the potential is applied, the electrons are drift towards a particular direction. When the magnetic field is given, the electrons are acted upon by the magnetic force, so they bend. Which electron? We don't say, we, no prescription. We generalize and say electrons. But I want to tell you, the quantum state, N, L, M, L, M, S, they, can, they give identity for every single electron. So every single electron will have its own energy. We know that uh, the energy and N are related. And even simple Bohr model says C is minus 13.6 by N squared. It's a function of N. So you cannot generalize them. So every single electron, you must take the reciprocal space. Reciprocal space, uh, I, I, if somebody has the doubt towards the I would. So it's the uh, inverse space of the crystal structure. And therefore, you, and if you see this one line, which you are drawing in the reciprocal space for various K values, it is not a straight line like this. It uh, varies. Variations are there, and that is uh, important. This is a semiconductor bond state. Now, this is the top of the valence band, and the bottom of the conduction band is this. So, top of the valence band is due to a particular electron, which is not a straight line like this. The, that particular band has various energy values for various K points. So, this is why I say theoretical. Computation investigation helps us to find exactly what it is. And insulator band gaps, they have a lot of gaps. Fine. So now, with this basics, let me just go ahead. I'm going to just tell you how we engineer the gaps. Why we engineer the gap? First of all, let me show you direct and indirect semiconductor. So now, this is again a schematic. This is the reality, this is the top, and this is the bottom. But let me just pin out this portion alone and show you like this. It gave space. If top of the valence band, bottom of the conduction band, lie along the same K point, in the sense, if these two are the uh, two pairs, then it is direct. If they are along different K points, then it is indirect. So all those who do solar energy or energy harvesting, would be looking out for this, not for this, even though silicon falls under indirect. Why? In energy harvesting, energy gap Eg is equal to H nu plus H cross omega. This portion is H nu and this portion is H nu, but this is H cross omega. That means this much H cross omega is the lattice energy which is wasted in heating the lattice and only this much H nu you are able to harvest and therefore you want to engineer a material for energy harvesting, what you should do, try to pull this fellow, try to pull this fellow and push this fellow, make them along the same K point. Is it possible? Yes. This is called the indirect to direct band gap transitions. You can do band structure and there are procedures to find out. What exact microscopic parameters you need to touch upon, or what microscopic properties, the structural parameters that govern the band gap, that are responsible for producing the gap in the solid. If you could know, you accordingly you choose the combination of the material, maybe the dopant. You can move from binary to ternary, ternary to quaternary, or you, in the binary, you choose appropriate dopant. Then you are able to adjust the gap, and therefore, you are taking it to your required, uh, required um, high, uh, direct uh, band gaps uh, material. Or you can even widen the gap. 
So you know, uh, this is what another way of engineering. So EG is equal to H nu I say. We have different regions. Those who do disensitized solar cell materials, they try to investigate, they try to widen this range. So they try to include UV also into the range because they want more energy to be harvested. So you are playing with this energy gap, EG, which is equal to H nu. So if I can push it to the uh, infrared region slowly, instead of this value of energy, if I can go to this infrared region, because a new associated with the infrared, uh, yeah, I, this energy gap will automatically vary. So if I want some application as a sensor in the army, in the defense, I want it to infrared. So I must adjust my EG. And therefore, the, it is possible for us to pull or uh, make a material that is what is called tuning a material or engineering a material tailor making a material to suit a particular application is it possible yes it is possible that's what i'm going to show theory computing is helping us with the knowledge of dft so some of the interesting phenomena quickly if i run through how we engineer with the basic understanding of the periodic table, silicon, germanium, and tin, they are fourth group element, perfect semiconductor. So we cannot eliminate silicon and germanium when we try to tune the gaps. So how we tune the gap? So if the silicon and germanium, they belong to the fourth group, which will be pure covalent. Now I want to, I want to emphasize the bonding, mixed nature of bonding and the characteristic property are related. So when we want to tune, we can adjust the type of the bonding, introduce mixed nature of bonding, enhance ionicity, reduce covalency or enhance covalency, reduce ionicity. This is what is tuning. This is what is engineering. So if you are going to take silicon and germanium, which is the fourth group, it is pure covalent, highest covalency, you will be able to see, which can be proved using charge density contour, again, using DFT calculations. Now you go to the either side of the fourth group, one element from the third and one element from the fifth group, like aluminum phosphate, gallium arsenide, and so on. You are moving away from the fourth group. So it's a mixed nature of bonding. It will not be copied pure covalent, some ionicity will be there. So ionocovalency will be present. You go to third, uh, uh, second group and the uh, sixth group. You take the valence electron two, here yeah, the valence electron six, take the average, it's two plus six, uh, um, eight divided by two, again four. So number of uh, electrons per atom, the valence electron per atom is again four. Similarly with the three and five. That's why two, six semiconductors are famous. Three, five semiconductors are famous. They mimic. But you should understand all the two, six semiconductors are having more ionic character than three, five semiconductors. And one and six, if you take, they are highly ionic covalency will be zero. This is the base. So you can play with this. So now I'm just showing you top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band. This animation simply shows when the element, this is silicon, gallium arsenide, germanium, indium arsenide. So how it is so sensitive to the element you add with another element. So now uh, these are the examples you can say from, I just showed you two, six and three, five. You, you can make uh, ternary and quaternary like this. So uh, if you replay, keep it as, as if the same, and this two is the average of one and three. So this replace the second group element by one of the first group, one of the third group, you can get one, three, six, two charcoal pyrites. So they are ternary. You know, similarly, you can tune three, five uh, also. You will get nictites. So now further, if I take this replacement, and just replacing one by the other, keeping the E by A ratio uh, uh, intact, you can play with this material combination. You can produce uh, different kinds of semiconductors. So you can talk about binary, you can talk about ternary, you can talk about quaternary, different combinations, or semiconductors, binary, with the transition element doping, and so on and so forth. So now, in this picture, I just want to show you germanium. 
So in the germanium, you see the top of the valence band, bottom of the conduction band. This is what is the band gap. And aluminum arsenide, if you see well, aluminum arsenide, you can change, you can see the uh, uh, variation. Only this portion I'm just showing you. Indium arsenide, if you take uh, aluminum arsenide and indium arsenide, arsenide is the same. Only thing is aluminum is replaced by indium. Both of them belong to the same group in the periodic table. But you see in the reciprocal space, in the dispersion relation, see the variation. How much variation just a replacement from the same group element can produce. So this is the avenue for us to do engineering the gaps. So all that we have to do is with a basic understanding which parameter is touching which part of it. We'll be able to choose accordingly and, and, and engineer the gap. So indium arsenide and indium phosphate. All that we have done is to replace arsenide by phosphate. Keeping the indium the same, see the variation. So this understanding uh, with the position of anion, that is the B atom, and the cation atom in the periodic table, appropriate choice. The smaller the size of the cation, wider is the band gap. This is just a thumb rule. And like this, we can go ahead uh, with the variation. You have, so you keep gallium the same and change the B atom. You will be the, the gap variation. So all that I'm asking you to see is the gap variation. So promising, uh, I mean, the theoretical output shows uh, uh, that uh, uh, there is a scope for us to play in between the two also. Because uh, the, just in a, a replacement of one by the other is changing the gap so much, there is a scope. So that is what it simply means. And based on this only, a lot of people do a lot of experimental work also. So now when you do, just in few minutes time, I want to tell you, Gallium phosphide, it is a binary. You can make a ternary, as I said, replace this gallium with zinc and germanium. So the E by A ratio remains the same. So in the place of one gallium, which is placed along the C axis like this, take two of them and alternately place. So, so alternately along the C, but the P site is the same. So this is tetrahedral bonding, so you can see. But looking at the picture, you don't see any difference. All that we have done is just a replace in between. In between, we have just to put, instead of one cation, we have put two cations, and that's all keeping the anion the same. Would it change anything? It, crystal structure looks the same, but there are a lot of changes are happening. These are the changes. So anion position shifting. Anion position. So now this anion is uh, interacting with the two different types of cations. Definitely electronegativity difference will make a difference. That is impacting the gap. That's the thing I want to tell. And anion, um, and then compression. Here C by A will be exactly, uh, uh, C by 2A will be 1. Here, the moment you do this, the crystal structure will show a kind of a compression. So it will compress. So when it compress, it creates a field that's called a crystal field. What will this crystal field do that will lift up the degeneracy? When the degeneracy is lifted up, optical properties will be definitely touched upon. This is the idea to tune. If you can appropriately choose, you should know how much compression would create, how much energy gap variation, slight I, a small idea of uh, uh, idea uh, the thumb rule kind of understanding would enable you to tune, just create compression. And that is what it is, tuning. So now, uh, and will it uh, 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 impact the gap? Yes, it will impact the gap. I'm going to just to show you the result of the, some of this uh, binary and the ternary. These are called the ternary analogs. All that I have done is replace. In this case, I've taken the average of this. And uh, so binary and ternary corresponding. So you take the periodic table and, and see. You'll be able to identify for every binary, which is the corresponding ternary. Now, they have promising application in visible infrared uh, um, regions, light emitting diodes, detectors, uh, app converters, uh, and, uh, and, and so on. So they are promising. So from their band uh, structures, we'll be able to see. It helps to engineer the semiconducting material. That is it. And though this idea was published by me long back in now, also we are doing a lot of semiconductor, but the base is this, base is this. That's why I took this part of it. And on the spin polarization, 
uh, in half metal side will show so the reduction of band gap with respect to binary analog is known as band gap anomaly so i will just show you anomaly so if i take uh, the gallium phosphate for example and a cadmium uh, cdsip2 as the corresponding ternary calculate the band structure of the, and find the gap of the binary find the gap of the ternary and take the difference between the two energy gap that difference is called band gap anomaly when you move from binary to ternary now what would give this difference in energy when you move from binary to ternary that a two cation that is d electrons are involved so here you have, you have the d electrons of cadmium will it play yes sometimes cation electronegativity fact the electronegativity of two cations are different will it play yes structural effect meaning anion position shift because of unequal interaction with the two cations and that uh, compression which is called tetragonal compression creating crystal field that will also affect so i just want to take uh, in the dictate family two important thing the total anomaly is due to and, uh, and I, in this particular group i don't see much of a difference with the d electrons but cation electronegativity two cations interaction and compression and also anion position shift are the reasons for it now i want to tell you advanced research what do we mean by advanced research in computation and theory com combination we are able to look into the microscopic phenomena it is possible for us to just to do only it is freezing so i'm not going into a lot of theoretical uh, procedure here but uh, uh, it is possible for us to freeze the rest of the effects and allow only one effect and see how much is the energy difference it can give so just allow the cation electronegativity alone freeze the anion no anion shift no compression so alone this alone you can see similarly freeze this and you can find the energetically every single aspect of it will impact the total energy how much is the impact in the total energy if that is the impact in the total energy what is the impact on the energy gap that is the idea used in tuning so now i am just to show in you and um, to uh, uh, just the results i'm showing here these are the ternary and these are the binary and you take the difference so this is the total energy uh, energy gap difference or the anomaly now you add these two this is a due uh, uh, for uh, so, okay fine so this is the anomaly that just the difference between the two now you take the uh, uh, structure parameter that is anion position shifting and the compression and that due to the two ca different uh, cations coming in so figure uh, freezing this energy gap uh, contribution is this freezing this energy gap contribution is this add the two you get this now microscopically i have dealt with the system with the computations of investigation and i am able to see this is what is the contribution now beautifully you don't allow any you don't freeze completely relax the system do the regular calculation and see the band gap variation exactly it matches so if this is the anomaly for this binary and ternary the calculation is able to tell who is the reason for this what was the reason for this much and we are able to see this though it is old result the same idea only i am using till now so recently we have published paper on quaternary semiconductors spin polarized semiconductors all these papers are available in my uh, sites also but since you said advanced calculation now the present calculations are all done uh, sometimes without even knowing because a lot of options are given without knowing microscopically who is the contributing we just get the outcome result but this one result what which i did long back gives a lot of information in the microscopic uh, uh, phenomena that's the reason i thought i would share this and recent uh, semiconductor papers you can see so very quickly in few minutes i want to just tell impact of spin in half metallic materials because spin is another microscopic thing which uh, impacts so and i am not going in depth but i just to show you 
what the spin uh, polarized uh, calculation and how it, it, it uh, impacts. So uh, uh, first of all, uh, let me tell half metallic materials. So what are half metallic materials? So half metallic materials. The materials which are uh, metallic nature in one channel of spin and semiconducting nature of the gap in another channel are called half metallic materials. So what do you mean? So far, we never talked about in density function theory, we simply took spin of the electrons. We never said, let me do the band structure allowing only the spin electrons or only the down spin electrons. But now we have computation sophistication and theoretical also. We adjust with spatial part and the spin part in the total uh, wave function. And therefore, we adjust, and which is called spin polarized density function theory, which gives um, uh, avenue chance for us to look into the microscopic level, up spin channel, what it does, down spin channel, what it does. Can it be different? Yes. When you allow only up spin channel, it says it is a metal. A down spin channel, it says there is a gap. So what? So what if that is the case? Will all the materials show this? No. Only few of them will show. So those who show this behavior are promising material for spintronic applications, giant magneto resistance applications. So search for new novel materials which would show half metallic behavior. So that is what uh, are the results. So to save time, let me not go in detail, but you can see in some of my uh, uh, recent publications, I'm sorry about it. Uh, uh, let me just tell how uh, this is uh, the compound. So these are the compounds called uh, 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 the Heusler alloys. So in the Heusler alloys, this is the combination. Uh, if you see aluminum, silicon, germanium, tin, indium. So in this combination, you, you just see some of them are only half metallic. Some are not showing this behavior. So what I have done here is I was just gone through it. Uh, I have been in the calculations. We have a pinpoint or handpicked a few materials to suggest to experimentalists. They saw half metallic properties and they are promising for spintronic and your giant magneto resistance uh, 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 technology investigations. I just show you the band structure. So this is the spin channel. Uh, this is. Uh, um, uh, 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 you can see the bands crossing over here, spin up channel, which is metallic in nature. Now you don't see, if you see the values, definitely there will be a gap. So in this case, you see 0.344 is so this kind of a material. This is cobalt, iron, niobium, aluminum combination. So we can call it a half metallic material. And uh, let me show another. So now you can do the density function theory calculation, sorry, uh, DOS, uh, density of states calculation, which simply shows the distribution of electrons uh, over the energy range. So if you see the distribution, up channel is this, which is having, the, this is your Fermi level. You are able to see some uh, uh, electrons present over here, metallic. And the, in the uh, uh, downspin channel, you see uh, uh, there is a gap, gap between the here. No, no states are available at Fermi, meaning there is a gap. There is no gap because states are available. No states are available. Theory is a tool to identify half metals. Now, here also you can see some of the materials I have just shown, and the theory will tell you. So you can polarize and see, even in the same material, uh, cobalt, iron, niobium, aluminum combination, I'm trying to see if there are states, the states are coming from which element. So we are able to see the year falls at the peak, hybridization of these states of cobalt, this fellow here, cobalt, iron, with a small contribution from niobium. These three are the responsible uh, elements for producing the states metallic behavior in one. 
So is it possible for me to further investigate and see if I replace one by the other? If I want it to be half metal or I don't want it to be half metal, you can decide, you can tune the combination. So this again, you can see half metallic behavior. So this is metallic and this is semiconductor, this is indirect semiconductor. And the corresponding DOS, again, you are able to see the states present here, states are zero here half metallic in uh, uh, nature. And now you look at this, you, whether it is up spin or down spin, in all the channels, uh, they are showing metallic behavior. So for example, cobalt, iron, niobium, indium, in spin up channel, and um, GJ, that's our exchange correlations in which we have used. In the spin up, you see D, there is metallic, in spin down also, metallic not suitable, we are not looking for this material. So like this, uh, the similar thing will help you out. Another important thing is it should have integer spin. That is another condition for our application, spin running application, integer spin. So when, uh, just, uh, you might be wondering, is it possible uh, to have integer spin? Or usually we see the spin uh, arrangement D, uh, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then down spin. That's how we fill. If it is an unpaired spin, then we say that there is no pairing and the spin is alone. So it should be integer. No, it depends from the theoretical calculations. So we must see what is the distribution from the charge states. Then definitely we will get the magnetic moment in fraction only. But half metallic materials alone beautifully show integer space so beautiful that's why science is very interesting and theoretical investigation if you really do it with uh, with passion it shows a, a real interesting feature how will you know you have to see them this is how you calculate find out the total number of valence electrons and uh, yeah, how many are occupied in the uh, uh, bound state and the remaining will be in the unbound state see the difference to get mu b and this is one small example with this I will finish. So we just calculate number of mass. I said each one of them represent an electron. Calculate how many of them are there if it is spin down. Or I will, uh, this is how I will calculate. Uh, and let me just show you number. Number of bands, yeah. Number of valence electrons. How will you know? Cobalt, just uh, give the uh, co uh, configuration and calculate. Cobalt is having nine. And iron is having eight, niobium five. And this is how we calculate the total number of valence electrons. Number of occupied bands from the band structure, we must calculate the occupied bands. And then a number of unoccupied is total valence minus the occupied, the 13 is the unoccupied. The difference between uh, these two will give you the magnetic moment, which is one in this case, two in this case, two in this case. This is. Theoretically, from the configuration, from the idea of number of bands we are doing, but you can do the same thing from your microscopic advanced dense spin polarized density function theory calculation, which will tell you magnetic moment due to cobalt, moment due to iron, moment due to niobium, moment, total. You just have to total this. So this is a first line or second line. You can see that the two different correlation functions. Only those which are proven to be half metals seem to have the integer spin. This advanced calculation at the microscopic level are proving the same results. And therefore, I would like to conclude by saying engineering materials for promising applications is possible with a quantum mechanical theoretical prescription such as density functional theory with an aid of computational sophistication. So whatever I discussed is a very fundamental, uh, um, uh, fundamental uh, 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 concepts, but very powerful and essential for people who, are, who venture into experimental research or, uh, or theoretical research. With the, if you have some insight like this from basic calculations, it will enable us to have passion towards what we do. So with this, I would like to thank uh, 
uh, uh, the organizers for giving me this opportunity and Professor Muruga Kutim for chairing the session. Uh, thank you so much. If you have any specific doubts, I'd be more than happy to uh, uh, to clarify in a few minutes. I think already I'm completely uh, on the last time. Over to organizers. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Uh, some questions uh, uh, what is my ask you, ma'am. The first question is, sir? Yeah, you can tell me what are the questions. Sir, it's not clear. You're, uh, you're not uh, clear of your voice. Uh, are there questions in the chat box? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. First question. Uh, ma'am, the, the, one of the best people lecture on TV. Yeah, can somebody read out the questions for me? or? Yes, ma'am, what is the cost and increase in electron code per car? No, can you, no, it's not clear. Can you be very, uh, no. break it and tell me? What is the causes and increase? In electron code per recombination through the junction, uh, please state the reason for the improvement in the performance no, of the diode into the sorry, uh, sorry, sir, it's, it's jarring. Nothing is clear. Can can somebody uh, uh, or uh, sir, uh, uh, can you please uh, uh, show it in the chat box? I can read it myself or uh, whichever way. Ma'am, this question, ma'am, what is yeah. the cost increase? What is the uh, no, what is the process in increase? Process. Ah. Process in increase. Increase. Yes, the electron code yes. per recombination. Oh, yes. recombination. Ah. Okay, okay. Process of recombination. Ah, okay. Recombination. Uh, 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 recombination because I was talking about uh, 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 different materials. Uh, Okay. Uh, I see. Anyway, you see, from uh, the question was not very clear, but from what I understood, I think someone wants to know what is the chance of recombination. So the recombination is, of course, something which we need to uh, keep in mind because when there is internal recombination, the in uh, harvesting, it uh, we will be losing some energy. And in the band structure, unfortunately, I didn't have that band structure, but in the band structure calculations itself, we will be able to see intermediate states are coming in between the two. Like um, uh, some of the disensitized solar cells, when they substitute with the zinc, or the zinc oxide when transition elements are coming in, you will be able to see the uh, intermediate uh, state. So uh, with that, we can do the calculation and see the chances of recombination. Uh, one more question. Which of the software is best for DFT calculation, ma'am? Software. See, yes. there are a number of softwares available now. Uh, Quantum Express or free software also is there. And Bean 2K is very promising. VASP is there. But irrespective of the software that you use, you must have some understanding of the basic theory because the nowadays the softwares are coming where you can choose your correlation potentials. So when you use a correlation, depending on the system that you use, you need to choose your correlation potential. Sometimes even that is not uh, possible. So you must do Hubbard corrections, all advanced calculations, which we have done in our recent papers. Uh, if you check, you will be able to see. Uh, so a Hubbard correction has to be done. So when 2K gives options for all this, but we should not be doing it at random. So with understanding, if you can use the software, Win2K is having a lot of uh, uh, avenues. So now even spin polarized calculations are possible. Optical calculations are also possible. What are the relations between optical conductivity and thumb? Optical conductivity and? Uh, there is any relation, uh, relation between optical conductivity and example thumb? Optical conductivity calculation can be done. Optical conductivity is so you, you do the uh, absorption studies. Uh, Kramer's standard equation is used. 
ma'am sorry for the interruption yeah. question is uh, there is any relation between optical conductivity and uh, energy gap optical conductivity and energy gap actually speaking ek relation not directly in you know, uh, of course uh, conduct uh, energy gap is a different uh, calculation from directly you can see but optical conductivity you see you must do the uh, ek uh, um, relation the energy versus k relation you must take and you can uh, you uh, what you see in the band structure is energy versus k descriptive uh, drawing uh, or the figurative representation is there but you can calculate epsilon value using cramer's equation that e and k and optical conductivity can be interrelated so you can refer my recent i mean last year or so we published a paper in uh, two dimensional materials uh, graphene uh, silicon and germanium optical properties alone i have a paper so in that i have discussed optical properties exactly optical conductivity we have calculated please refer that paper sir okay okay thank you ma'am ma'am uh, additional one more question uh in my case uh, I, i i i am taking a uv studies and calculating for optical conductivity mm. and that optical conductivity and also band gap going to rise when i am adding a doping is it correct optical conductivity and band gap when i am doping uh, mm. the both are going to increase see there um if you see when you do are you doing an experiment or a theoretical calculation uh, experimental ma'am the experimental is it in the nano regime no ma'am thin film thin film uh, yes, what is the uh, thickness of your film like uh ma'am uh, i have uh, film means i am uh, prepared the five variation it is a 0 1.5 this ratio the each ratio going to increasing the thickness level the maximum level for 33 nanometer the maximum uh, in the, uh, doping concentration okay okay see actually speaking we cannot have a direct link like that we have energy gap alone energy gap uh, uh, it is a function of various parameters but con- uh, optical transitions and energy gap but conductivity let me just look into it and and uh, uh, answer your question because without okay. seeing i don't want to just like that answer because it's a very sensitive uh, uh, parameter energy gap and okay. uh, depending on the system it will change if d electrons come it will change sometimes it will go d will go and delocalize uh, itself Uh, i mean uh, localize itself in that case band gap variation will come so okay. seeing your combination only we can tell okay okay thank you ma'am uh, already discussed in this question but sir uh, not cleared uh, clearly asked i uh, again asked that question the causes an increase in electron hole pair recombination through the junction please state any uh, state any reasons yeah and uh, can you repeat the sentence sir? Uh, the causes uh, and causes. causes yeah yes okay, ma'am okay okay i heard it as process okay the causes the reasons uh, okay uh, okay increase in electron hole pair recombination through the junction mm-hmm. please state the reason for the improvement in the performance of the diode due to illumination illumination See, yes, this, uh, again this question um, uh, I, directly i am not involved in this but i can tell you one thing now this is this the case with the nano or uh, bulk same thin film thin film yes. okay see if, by, by and large i can just uh, tell you this see if the um, more you come uh, reduce the dimensionality the uh, electron and the whole uh, uh, the, the electrons will get confined thereby the electron uh, uh, hole uh, the recombination process will be reducing so that uh, will cause uh, some uh, variations but exactly directly i i am not able to comment on electron hole recombination at the junction but still your question is not very clear to me Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, but still, if you can uh, uh, type your questions and the email me, I will okay. be able to uh, okay. give the correct answer. So just thank like you, that. thank you, ma'am. Thank uh, you, valuable your suggestion. Uh, your talk is very wonderful. Thank you very much for all uh, me. Thank you. 
What is the difference between DFT and Sir, I want to photo. So DFT is a different from matrix approach. Somebody has questioned that. Recombination is increasing. Uh, whether uh, uh, some problem with the slide, some people are saying uh, uh, slide is not clear, I'm not sure. Uh, so somebody should have stopped me and informed me. If there's something, any specific thing, I can tell. Okay, I think uh, uh, with this, I'm, uh, can I uh, wind up or organize us? Dr. Rajesh? Yes, ma'am. Uh, can I uh, can we wind up the session? If there yes, are no questions, support, thank you. Uh, so once again, thanks the organizer. Thanks for interaction, but uh, because of this some audio problem, I couldn't hear uh, much clearly. But certainly, I will be um, happy to interact with you uh, through email, and you can and uh, you can see some of my recent papers uh, available in my site, and that would be useful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for yes. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 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 The presentation will be conducted in three parallel sessions, chaired by Dr. J. Kalyana Sundar through Zoom link, Dr. T. Ilangovan through Google Meet link one, and Dr. Sandesh B. J. Babe through Google Meet link two. And uh, Dr. Yes Vatika. Through Google Meet. Link. Sorry, the fourth, the fourth session will be chaired by Dr. Kunguma Devi through Google Meet link. We request the participants to check the name list and get into the allotted link. Are you ready? Shall we start, sir? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Are you able to hear? Yes, sir. It's audible. Yeah, okay. Nice to meet you. Good afternoon, Rajesh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. How afternoon. are you, sir? Ah, fine, fine. Sir, on your video. video. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sir, Is it sir. working? Is it okay? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Welcome. Nice, sir. Nice, sir. Sir, continue. Continue. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you, sir. Hey, come on. Come on. Okay, good. Madam, come on. Very good afternoon for participants. Now the overall session will be shorter. How, how many people joined in the overall session? Please put your utterance in the chat box. Please put your attendance in the chat box so that how many of you in online? Yeah. 
here please uh, the zoom link participants only join the other people the google link they can join in the other, another link OP 264. OP 264. Ratnakar Jagadish. Are you there? Department of Chemistry. Madhuri, uh, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar University. Are you there? No. OP265 Danya. KKTM Government College. Are you there? First of all, are you hearing my voice? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. OP266, K. Sunanda. No. OP 267, T. N. Ramesh, Tumkur University. No. OP 268, M. Yuvaraj, Department of Physics, Metros Christian College. No. OP 269, C.H. Silpa Sakra, JNTU Institute of Science and Technology. No. OP 270, Bala Murugan Jairaman, sorry. Satya Bama Institute of Technology. No. Tanga Balu, yes. Tangabalu, yes. No, institute is not given. Yeah. OP 272, Dr. Safikta Dabashan, Telangana. No. OP 273, P. Sahaya Deepika, Monium University, Holy Cross College. OP 271. No. OP 274. Mohan K. A. Nanda Engineering College. Are you there? K. Meena, Annamala University. No. Mompilla Rahana Bajula, Lecturer in Chemistry, Directorate of Technical Education. Sir, sir, one minute. One. Yeah. Sir, the number answer, number uh, 2162, 241. 241. Ah, first number call, sir, 216. 216, you changed it. Oh, okay. oh, okay. 242, 263, isn't it? No, 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 no. 216, 
राजेश टू चेंज मै ऑर्डर Uh, and he told me to come to the zoom for uh, the presentation because i have some work in my institute so i have to finish it early okay uh, can you allow me to, uh, okay okay it's five number uh, okay can you start you to you to 275 275 okay we can start yeah okay what is your name sir thank you madam name i am i am rehna baiju ma'am please Okay, ma'am. Now, now, right. I will post okay, the list you. of list of uh, names in the chat box. Whoever present, please put your utterance in the chat box. Then we can easily call the participants to present. Madam, you proceed. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sir, uh, can you see my uh, PPT? Yeah, yes, it's visible. Okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. I am Mrs. Rehna Bai Jumambali. I am working as a lecturer in chemistry at Government Polytechnic, Kheda, Gujarat, and I am doing my PhD under the guidance of Professor C. B. Basin from the Department of Chemistry, Hemchandra Ajaria, North Gujarat University, Patan, Gujarat. I am doing a, um, just I started working on the uh, topic and I am doing a review work, and uh, my topic today is removal of organic dyes from aqueous solution by using spent tea leaves. uh the uh, work i am doing is uh, the removal of the dyes from the um, uh, effluent waters from the textile industry as gujarat is uh, famous for the textile and uh, so we are doing the work on the um, removal of uh, organic dyes and uh, this is my uh, preliminary uh, review and uh, just i am starting with the introduction water is an inorganic transparent tasteless odorless and nearly colorless chemical substance which is the main constituent of earth hydrosphere and the fluids of all non living organisms it is vital for all non forms of life even though it provides no calories or organic nutrients water plays an important role in the world economy large quantities of water are used in the industry and homes water is an excellent solvent for a wide variety of substances both mineral and organic as such it is widely used in the industrial process and in cooking and washing but the problem is due to the industry industrialization and urbanization a large number of organic and industrial effluents has been introduced into the environment that has increased the water and the land pollution problems many fold the main reason for water pollution is the discharge of dyes from the textile industry which is the largest consumer of dyes and the other dyeing industries recent studies reported that over 15% of total quantity of the dyes produced annually are lost during the production process and the, and they reach industrial wastewater becoming the contaminant for the environment again the problem continues continues organic dyes which are one of the larger group of pollutant could be toxic carcinogenic or mutagenic to living organisms thus making it unfit for irrigation and drinking therefore the effective removal of these hazardous dyes from the industrial wastewater before being discharged to the environment is a serious problem from the available methods of dye removal adsorption has been found to be an efficient and economic process for the treatment of dyeing in industry effluents because of the high cost production methods and less regeneration activated charcoal which is uh, at, uh, majorly used today used for the adsorption is replaced by low cost materials now what are the low cost materials among the tried adsorbent leaf based materials have gotten expanded consideration on the grounds that they are modest accessible in huge amounts in practically all locales of the world and require just a couple of phases of readiness 
tea is the most important agriculture commodity commodity in the world after water tea is the most popular beverage consumed worldwide during the preparation of a tea beverage a solid residue known as spent tea leaves that is the waste of the tea what we are getting is produced now the spent tea leaves as an adsorbent the physiochemical characteristics such as a large surface capacity and the fast kinetics of adsorption makes it suitable for low cost adsorbent for the removal of effluent from what waste water and also as an inexpensive precursor material for the production of activated carbon that is we can convert the used uh, spent tailies again to the uh, activated carbon important note is that when the tea waste used as adsorbent becomes saturated it is just incinerated and the waste water a waste tea ash obtained could also be used as an adsorbent and this is the image which i, I just a small uh, part of the uh, waste tea leaves what we are using and the preparation of the adsorbent Washing plays an essential role in the pre-treatment process as wastewater contains considerable amount of hydro hydrolyzable tannins, polysaccharides, and proteins, along with other soluble and colored components, which need to be eliminated before being used to avoid undue contaminations. The usage of hot distilled water to wash the raw material several times. until the supernatant solution remains colorless was a technique shared among several studies followed by drying milling and saving to get the fine powder because smaller particle size accounts for larger surface area available for adsorption and this is the already existed uh, reported uh, sem uh, image of the uh, waste tea leaf and the after the adsorption the figure provides uh, shows the sem micrograph of uh, stl that is spent tea leaf samples before and after dye adsorption figure a figure a uh, shows that the stl possesses a rough surface morphology with the pores of different sizes okay these pores are useful for the dye adsorption dyes can be accommodated in these pores figure b however shows that the surface of stl is covered with a dye molecule the, the the pores are covered with the dyes the dyes are getting absorbed on the pores okay this is the fp uh, ir spectrum of the uh, spent tea leaves and it shows the uh, different uh, uh, groups uh, present on the uh, stl the spectrum of stl displays indicates the presence of a broad band around uh, 3 uh, 3 to 8 8 per centimeter due to the bonded oh group in addition peaks at 2924 2856 per centimeter may be assigned to the aliphatic ch groups a peak of uh, peak at uh, 1660 per centimeter is due to the co stretching of amide group at uh, 1734 per centimeter is due to co stretching of the carboxylic group and at 1518 cm per centimeter due to the bending of the nh bonds in the amide now how to conduct the experiment the stl was applied for the removal of different dyes from the aqueous solution and the feasibility of using stl as a low cost adsorbent was investigated the effect of adsorbent dose contact time and the ph of the solution was studied by conducting the batch experiments it means uh, we are uh, taking the the experiment uh, is conducted by taking different uh, uh, dose of adsorbent one time we are keeping the dose of the adsorbent the other time the contact time will be fixed and next time the ph will be changed uh, like that the batch experiments are to be conducted the conventional isotherm and the kinetic models were considered for the experimental data the amount of dye absorbed at the time t that is qt was calculated based on the following mass balance relation qt is equal to c0 minus ct whole into v upon w where v c0 and ct in milligram per liter denotes the liquid phase concentration of dye at the initial time and at any time t respectively v is the volume of the solution uh, in liters and the w designate the mass of the dry adsorbent used 
And this is some of the uh, data uh, through which uh, I had collected. Uh, actually, the data uh, was very huge and uh, it cannot be accommodated in the small presentation. So I had made it into a small uh, table form. Uh, uh, the methylene blue had analyzed uh, uh, in the reference, I had quoted the reference. Uh, the, with the initial concentration of 0.5 milligram per liter and the pH contact time uh, is uh, 7 pH is the maximum absorption and uh, absorption dosage 0.5 per uh, 200 ml and uh, this way it is con uh, conducted for um, it's already uh, uh, when it, uh, it is uh, completed work and these are the different types of uh, uh, dyes which are used and uh, many more dyes are there and uh, uh, from the adsorption capacity and the adsorption dose, uh, dosage we can see that uh, by uh, doing um, by using a small amount of the adsorbent we can eliminate uh, this much grams or milligrams of uh, uh, dyes uh, from the uh, pollutant water okay and uh, now i conclude uh, in this review, an attempt is made to uh, has, has been made to present some studies done uh, on the use of spendy tea leaves as a green adsorbent for the removal of organic dyes from effluent water. The interest of the study study is that the spent tea leaves are the waste materials available in almost all regions of the world in abundant quantity. It may be understood by the discussion that after proper cleaning, Using water, the spent alias can be used as such as an effective absorbent. It is observed from the literature reviewed here that the mechanism and kinetic of adsorption shows some variation depending on the nature of the dye, that is acidic dye or basic dye, and the experimental conditions like pH, initial concentration of the dye, the adsorbent dosage, and the experimental temperature. By doing the review, we believe that much of the investigations on using spent tea leaves as adsorbent for dye removal had been carried out in the laboratories in small scale. But for implementing it in large scale usage in industry needs more systematic study. If it can be applied in industry, it will be a major solution for many environmental problems. And these are some of the re uh, references I had uh, quoted in the presentation. And uh, some I could not, and uh, uh, I complete my presentation. Thank you all. Sir, sir. Hello. Sir, Kalyan, sir. Sir. Hello. Sir, Kalyan, sir. Sir. Sir, your name, sir. Sir, you are, sir. ओके <laughs> सर <laughs> 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 So you can start, sir. Sound not audible. So your voice is not audible. Sir, sorry, I'm audible, sir. Sir, ah, yes, sir, I'm audible, sir. Continue, sir. sir. You can start. Yeah, yeah, yeah continue, continue. Okay, sir. Now I'm continuing, sir. Yeah, yeah you are you, you are OP yeah, number two one seven, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yes, sir. Two one seven. Doctor Dishinwasro. 
Thank you for the giving the opportunity, sir. Very good evening, sir. Hello, you. My name is Dr. D. Srinivas Rao, Associate Professor of Physics, uh, Rise Krishna Sai Group of Institutions, sir. Ongol, Prakasan District, Andhra Pradesh, sir. My presentation is, sir, in the form of a structural and light emitting properties of uh, terbium, doped, ASL, and uh, europium phosphorus, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. These are the introduction. What I am presenting the introduction, phosphor synthesis, resultant discussion, sample characterizations, conclusions, etc. Sir, 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 pre sir, present your PPT. Yeah. Sir, Kalyan Sundar, sir, only ah, yeah. uh, uh, methodology and uh, summary and conclusion enough, sir. Yeah, okay, okay. Ah. Sir, my screen is visible or not, sir? No, 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 no. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, no. My screen is. No, sir. No. One second, sir. Share your screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. yeah. sir, visible, sir. May I having visible, sir? My screen is visible or not, sir? Not, no, no, no. It Hello. is not visible. No, no, it is not visible. Sir, my screen is visible. No. No, it is not visible. Hello. Please share your screen, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it visible, sir? No. Sir, myself, uh, sir, no, sir. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. okay anyway, sir. you present it. I will. We will uh, sir. Okay, okay. Continue. Yeah. Okay, sir. I will. Yeah. Okay. Sir. Yeah. With a lack of time, sir. Yeah. Sorry for the inconvenience. So, sir, myself, Dr. D. Srinivasra, sir. Rice Krishna Group of Institutions, Ongol, sir. My presentation topic is uh, Structural and Light Emitting Properties of uh, Terbium Dopro ASL EU Phosphor, sir. Uh, these are the, my presentation outlines, sir. What I am presenting you introduction and uh, phosphor synthesis, result and discussion. So, Sample characterizations, so photo luminescence, XRD, so on and so sir. And conclusions. Main aim of my paper is how to supporting the present technology of the light. Within, within five minutes, These are the percent, basically percent, all of you know the introduction. Oh, sure, sir. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sure, sir. Yeah, okay. uh, this is uh, every demand of the first person is a tough investigation, sir, today onwards. So, but uh, in the uh, effective efforts of the, our guide and myself uh, to invent uh, some special properties of uh, chemical materials, sir. Now I am going to the just experimental evidence, sir. This is the experimental evidence. So aluminum, strontium lanthanides, so ASL phosphor with uh, different concentrations of uh, tetbium is present, sir. Uh, with the material samples are all the 100 to 1000 degrees centigrade for two hours in a muffle furnace, sir. After that, we have taken the PL studies and uh, XRD and uh, photosynthesis properties, sir. Uh, this is the curve to showing the temper how to changing the intensity, sir. Uh, ASL terbium, European phosphor, sir, having the U highest intensity is um, equal to 170, sir. Uh, after that, we have to take in the, some transition, sir. The first transition is uh, 5D2 to 7F3, sir. This transition is releasing the energy of uh, 2.429 electron volts, sir. The another transition takes place uh, 550 nanometer emitted peak, sir. 5D1 to 7F1 transition, sir. In that time, the kind of electric dipole moment, uh, they are giving the 2.307 electron volts of energy, sir. After the third intensity of the peak should be having 622, 626 nanometer of 5D0 to the 7F3, sir. This is a structure of uh, XRD, symmetric pattern, sir. Uh, that is uh, by Debye Sherrill method, had to follow the experiment, sir. SL, um, sir. This is shown in the picture, sir. And um, this is a morphological investigation, sir. Same. And uh, finally, we have concluded that uh, the ASL doped with the tetbium with different concentrations, sir. Then it gives the one to four micrometers, sir. These are the how to light emission, different uh, colors. And the conclusion, sir. Conclusion of the paper, sir. Uh, okay. Our investigation, we have to find out this, sir. Three, four. These four points are the predominant, sir. First one is the emission peaks are observed in ASL doped terbium when exited with the 254, 268, 278 nanometers, sir. That are having the mainly they can releasing the, the colors of the light to 540 nanometers so green and 588 yellow and 627 nanometer red, sir. As excitation wavelengths are should be increased, automatically the peak intensities are increased, sir. 
However, it is uh, interesting to note that uh, that the is the, the 627 nanometer peak, uh, whose intensity is more than 300 percent, sir. And uh, comparing to that one, 300 percent intensity is uh, high, sir. And last point is uh, the effect of egg beam in ASL doped with pyrobium is not seen. But here the presentation is uh, phosphor is suitable for the main green and red light sources of MGM, sir. My final conclusion point is, sir. Our sample is used for the light emission of green, yellow, and red emission, sir. These are the acknowledgments, sir. My acknowledgments. Okay, Thank nice. You, sir. Thank you for giving the opportunity. So in sir. your, uh, in you your, uh, amazing, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nice presentation. In your emission, Pratik, you you have mentioned only two colors, but in the final conclusion, you have yeah, yeah, three colors. How it is different from the two emissions and and three colors? Uh, and uh, uh, one thing, sir. Uh, Maybe we are be finalizing that uh, orange and red colors are be coincidence, sir, at the some conditions. So, so we are giving the only two colors, sir. Main but the em emission, colors, emission sir. peak is giving only two, two, isn't it? The, uh, two, sir. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, only two. Then how it is uh, possible to emit a three yeah. colors? Oh. Uh, um, the emission intensity is low, sir. But uh, samples characterization, we have to find out in up to only 1.5%. At the 1.5%, uh, European concentration increases, it will be dominant, sir. Red color is dominating the other percentage. Oh, anyway, you have to give some quantitative uh, uh, scientific man aptitude for the, this particular uh, uh, result. Uh, based on the uh, 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 earlier, earlier result, you can you can justify three colors. But in the present graph, I couldn't see. Yes. But in the present graph, you are mentioning only two peaks. If it is very low, then how can you judge the other colors? Other colors. If suppose it is low, means you can also judge for uh, other three colors also. Some other uh, not mentioning these three apart yes, from sir. three colors can also mention any, any other three colors. Uh, so you, you, you should precise on that. Sir, highest pay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, we have the find out that only the major intensity colors, sir, mainly. Uh, we have the one color is neglected, sir. So we're taking the two colors emission out to broad, sir. And um, according to the same morphology, crystallographic structure. So we have concluded that uh, the two colors are the, our given phosphor is dominated, sir. Okay, okay, nice. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir, thank for your kind patience and thanks to the organizing committee, sir, thank you. giving the opportunity. Thank you, one and all, sir. Thank you, thank you. Next to the OP104. One, one sir, uh, yeah. sir, yeah. sir, presentation on the four and ask you one or two questions, you know, sir, because the long young class scholars are waiting, sir. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. The next OP is 104, Dr. Smriti Sarma. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Okay, I, I'll be sharing this. Yeah. yeah, okay. You share it. Sir, it says only the host can share this. It says only the host can share in this meeting. You will have to enable me to share the screen. Yeah, you, you have to share the screen. I am sharing the screen. It says only the host can share I the screen. You are made as co-host. You can share the video. I am Smriti. You haven't made me the co-host. Smriti. S-M-R-I-T-I. -I. Smriti. S-M-R-I-T-I. -I. Dr. Smriti Sharma. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. ma'am. It's okay. done. Yes, now it is. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. It again is saying only the host can share the in this meeting. But I can you please make me co-host? It says only the host can share the uh, screen. Dr. Rajesh. Uh, okay. Screen. Co-host, um, sir. Please operate, sir. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now it is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah, okay, madam. Okay, you've started. So I have got two uh, oral presentations today. The first topic is toxicity you, of... You, you present any one of the uh, oral presentations. Okay. That's just okay. okay. Toxicity of nanoparticles in plants. So uh, this is a module that we have designed to train our students for telling them about the uh, toxic effects of nanoparticles and toxic effects of nanotechnology in general. So we have collaborated with Department of Botany of our college and uh, Department of Chemistry and Department of Botany have collaborated. So yeah. plant tissue culture is a method which is used to grow large numbers of cells, organs, and whole plants under aseptic environments. 
and it is based on the property of totiopotency it has the advantage that large number of propagules in limited space uh, can be propagated uh, can be produced and uh, it is time independent of the season so uh, all of us know that nanotechnology is a revolutionary science and oh. nanoparticles are the building blocks of nanotechnology can please you see go. my screen yeah yeah please go to your work madam yes. so uh, uh, like nanoparticles are uh, very beneficial to us all of us know their advantages but nano toxicity uh, of these particles is also an area that is rapidly growing and people are like uh, uh, trying to investigate are there any bad effects of nanotechnology so uh, we wanted to in, uh, investigate that and along with our undergraduate students because ours is an undergraduate college we designed a teaching strategy uh, to incorporate the integration of nanotechnology into the curriculum uh, at the undergraduate level so that the students can themselves uh, see for themselves whether nanoparticles are toxic or not so uh, uh, we treat, uh, train the students uh, in vitro in vivo and in silico techniques so that uh, they can do justice to the interdisciplinary character of this uh, particular research problem the problem selected was computational analysis of phytoregulatory profiles of nanoparticles so to be specific we uh, the effect of sio2 nanoparticles on the percent seed germination and seedling growth of sorghum bicolor was studied so uh, that is why we collaborated with department of botany so sorghum bicolor all of us know that it is a food for human consumption and it is also a feed grain for livestock and it has many industrial applications also so first of all uh, tissue culture techniques uh, were used and uh, sterilized seeds were cultured uh, and then um, nanoparticles were inco incorporated into these sterilized seeds through millipore filtration system with a hypodermic syringe and then these seeds were inoculated culture tubes containing the medium inside a laminar flow uh, air flow cabinet they were kept then the cultures were maintained at a temperature of 26 plus minus 2 degree celsius with a photo period of 8 hours of light and 16 hours of dark and seeds were germinated in different concentrations of silicon oxide nanoparticles and results were compared with those cultured in ms uh, basal medium so uh, the parameters that were studied were percentage seed germination and root and shoot growth all this was done by undergraduate students so these are some of the photographs uh, that were used uh, uh, in the uh, like that particular experiment incubation of cultures and these are the seedlings of uh, sorghum bicolor raised on various levels of sio2 and then these are the photographs of uh, so, uh, seedlings transferred to the pots <coughs> so we basically trained the students from chemical sciences plant sciences and life sciences and they came together and worked synergistically in a highly congenial environment and uh, basically they analyzed and synthesized the information gathered and uh, determine the direction the project would take themselves and uh, we trained the students uh, in in vitro techniques in vivo techniques and in silico techniques they measured the physico chemical properties uh, particle size and distribution shape crystal structure chemical composition etc using uh, material studio software then uh, in in vitro techniques all this was done that i've already explained and they also uh, Uh, like uh, they prepared the medium sterilization inoculation all this they did and uh, at the, and then scanning and uh, the hands on experience on uh, scanning and transmission electron microscopy preparation of nanoparticle suspensions and knowledge of uh, molecular modeling techniques were given to the uh, undergraduate students so this was highly successful uh, and uh, the Uh, there is when uh, the, the studies are still going on but uh, the sio2 nanoparticles were uh, the preliminary suge studies suggest that they were affecting the seedling growth and we are working more uh, in this direction so thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity to present my work and okay. uh, yeah i can also uh, i mean i have two uh, presentations so you can guide me that okay nice nice taken. nice presentation madam thank uh, you so yeah much. different field you are taken very nice uh, how how this uh, silicon oxide nanoparticle was prepared so they uh, silicon oxide nanoparticles they uh, purchased it and uh, i mean they did not prepare it as such the uh, bot botany people department of botany purchased it 
Uh, okay, they they purchased as purchased the nano particle. Oh, how much is the size of the nanometer? Uh, uh, nano particle. Uh, hello, sorry. Sir, could you please repeat your question? The size of the nano nano particles. The size of the nano particles. Uh, I am uh, right now. I don't uh, uh, remember that. because the students collected this uh, uh, this data we basically instructed them and the uh, department of botany had bought it so uh, this is a collaborative approach and uh, my friend is not joined who also uh, contributed to this she would have uh, thrown light on this okay 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 uh, that uh, that is seed 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 is yes. planted on the nanoparticles uh, mud so this uh, seed was inoculated with the nanoparticles okay you mixed with uh, some uh, fertilizers or plain uh, uh, nano particles sir uh, it was we mixed it with a suspension mixed with the suspension that is you, you used to fertilizer or some other thing or on another thing the absorbed seeds absorb those uh, nano particles okay 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 madam thank you thank you so much sir thank you nice presentation thank you madam and what about op105 sir let it be so some other candidates are waiting so we will okay we will give chance to all people okay, thank, thank you, you so much thank you for the chance thank you madam thank you the next person whoever uh, willing to present the oral presentation please dr rajesh So if there is any, uh, if there is no volunteer, you can call out the name, sir. Nobody is there. So you can. Sorry, uh, any others, sir? Uh, any uh, nobody is there. Nobody mm -hmm. is given uh, any link on the chat box. So uh, do you have any communication from other candidates? Sorry, uh, seat uh, number twenty. धर्मराजु श्रीनिवास राव गैब्री जल इफ एनिबडी प्लीज लेट मी नो गैब्रिया जनीफा स्वीट डॉक्टर आसादी श्रीनिवास डॉक्टर मुस्तीफ मुहम्मद अब्बास सर यू आर म्यूटेड यस मुस्तकी मोहम्मद अब्बास ऑलरेडी प्रेजेंटेड यस्टरडे वो यस्टरडे यू हैव प्रेजेंटेड ओके या प्रेजेंटेड यस्टरडे नैनो नैनो कैटल नैनो कैटलाइज ऑर्गेनिक सिंथेसिस या या ओके ओके या 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 Okay, B. Ramu, Dr. S. Saravanan, Dr. G. Anburaj, Mrs. Yam Yelamadi, Dr. Aswini Kumar, Jageshwar Prasad, and Smriti Sharma Bhatia. Actually, she he is presented. I can present the second presentation also if you have time. Yeah, yeah. Let let's try. Dr. Gunwandi Nehi. So she also pens. She is my colleague only. She also pens in morning only. Okay. Good morning. Okay. She presented. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. MD Abdul Bashir, Dr. Rajya Poiske, Dr. Bhagat Sharma, E. Silva, Isaki, B. Abhineshar, N. Bhagyama, or Yamalda. No. Then the uh, next uh, opportunity is going to Dr. Uh, Smriti Sharma. you can present your another oral question thank you so much sir thank yeah, you so yeah. much yeah okay okay uh, you will have to make me co host yeah again you have to go dr rajesh will you please make yes sir yes sir yeah thank yes, you sir. he has been made co host continue thank you yeah. so much uh, can you see my screen Yes, no, yes. yes okay so this is about covalent uh, side wall functionalization of nanotubes uh, this is useful in the areas like nano bioelectronics hydrogen storage polymer composite science and molecular scale mechanics 
it helps in the separation and manipulation of carbon nanotubes improves uh, their solubility dispersibility and processability so uh, it is a very efficient uh, route to form novel uh, carbon nanotube compounds so we uh, did uh, there are some experimental limitations in handling the carbenes and carb matlab we studied the chemical functionalization of carbon nanotubes using carbenes there are some experimental limitations in handling the carbenes and carbon nanotubes uh, because uh, the reaction is explosive so not much data is available regarding the mechanistic and electronic aspects of carbene cnt interactions so we have started this preliminary study uh, we have taken single walled uh, nanotubes and uh, we have chosen them as models uh, for zigzag and armchair carbon nanotubes uh, 10 0 and 60 and uh, cyclo addition of both zigzag and armchair carbon nanotubes with various carbenes like ch2 c uh, and cx2 where x can be uh, uh, cf2 ccl2 cbr2 and ci2 were undertaken and results will also were also compared with the unsaturated carbon uh, containing system which is uh, corresponding to the uh, mass of the nanotube so uh, the popular approach for larger systems we know that is uh, <coughs> just a second just a second the uh, is the onium approach which combines a low and high level theory to allow a more realistic treatment of the system and uh, that is not suitable for nanotube system and the semi empirical methods are good for describing some of the properties of the nanotubes but uh, mostly give unreliable estimates uh mostly give unreliable unreliable estimates uh, for the larger systems so they are not suitable for nanotubes uh, we we uh, that is why we selected dft so these are the carbon nanotubes uh, uh, optimized structures and this these are the results for uh, the functionalization of the 10 system and uh, you can see the, uh, this is for ch2 cf2 ccl2 cbr2 and ci2 and uh, uh, if you can see clearly on the screen uh, the various uh, carbenes have after the reaction they have added uh, uh, either some carbenes uh, you uh, did cyclo addition and some disrupted the whole thing so the results were like this we wanted to explain the variation of the adsorption energies with the size of the carbene by considering the nature of the carbene moieties uh we uh, the calculated reaction energies uh, you know suggested that ccl2 was displaying an unusual instability its reaction energy is lower than those observed for cf2 and cbr2 instead being the mean of, uh, and uh, also one more important thing the cal the uh, calculated molecular charges reflected an anomalous behavior for fluorine for which the ch uh, charge on the carbon is highly positive due to the enormous electron withdrawing power of fluorine so that that result was slightly off balance and uh, it is uh, very very uh, like uh, we we try to explain this uh, with the the uh, reasons given in the literature and uh, it was found that the adsorption on semiconducting that is zigzag nanotubes was consistently weaker than on metallic nanotubes thus the adsorption of the carbene is dependent on tube chirality this is very important that we predicted that uh, the adsorption of the carbene is dependent not on the carbene but on the tube chirality which is a prerequisite for separation of metallic and semiconducting nanotubes and shortest distance of the carbene from the 10 sw nt surface are significantly larger for ch2 than those for the 6 6 sw nt surface so adsorption of carbenes on metallic sw nts is much stronger than on semiconducting nanotubes uh, apart from that we also uh, uh, we also discovered that uh, the uh, in many cases the metallic sw uh, hello ah yes the audio bro yes can yeah your screen is uh, changed correct yes hello 
సార్ హలో డాక్టర్ స్మృతి మేడం యువర్ వాయిస్ ఇస్ బ్రేకింగ్ ఆర్ యూ దర్ డాక్టర్ స్మృతి శర్మ am i audible the connection went hello? yeah no now it's okay yeah you you proceed yeah hello okay ah, yes yes madam yes. Uh, so uh, we concluded that the trend towards carbonic just a second the trend towards carbonic reactivity is the same both for both the armchair and the zigzag nanotubes but adsorption is stronger in the armchair uh, nanotube case and charge transfer is the main mechanism in changing the electronic structure of the tube the chemical interactions involving large char- large charge transfer were sensitive to the energy gap of the cnt and therefore can be used for discriminating between the semiconducting and metallic cnts and uh, uh, one of the possible mechanisms include charge transfer to and from the adsorbed species the interactions between carbenes and swnts in our study can help us in finding the mechanism of molecular sensing with nanotube molecular wires so also carbenes adsorbed on the surface of the nanotubes can be uh, you know uh, they can be <coughs> they can be used as a no- novel bio sensors they can be used as hello sir please uh, please allow for only summary and conclusion sir remaining three yeah. uh, are available sir yeah okay okay hello dr smriti madam hello ah uh, hello ah uh, yeah okay you have nice person there uh, i have one doubt uh, are you hearing Dr. Smriti? No. Hello? Ah, uh, hello? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Hello? Yeah, I'm audible. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have only one doubt. Sir, sir. Yeah, you, you explain. How, how you selected this uh, carbon nanotube in the DFT calculation? how many number of atoms you have incorporated for the carbon nanotube hello uh, hello are you are you hearing okay i think she has some tower problem uh, let's move to the next talk uh op306 asha are you there op op306 asha asha is there yes sir ah uh, yes you can present present Asha Yeah you you present present your screen start the presentation my slide Asha ma'am has been made as co-host she can present the slide Sir ma'am Miss Asha Hi yes sir please share your screen I think uh, Dr. Rajesh, yes, sir. Make, make Asha as a host first. Yes, sir. It's already made, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sir, only allowed for methods and results and another one summary and conclusions because now it's time for 425. Okay. This is the last presentation, I think so. 
No, no, remaining three or four are like uh, allowed, sir. Eight page. Nobody is there. Ah. Yeah. Sir, okay, continue. Asha, you start start your presentation. Sir, my presentation, please. Hello, sir. Ah, yeah, you start. You start. Uh, my PowerPoint presentation topic is such a studies of lead and steel nanoparticle. Introduction. Nanometer at least one dimension less than approximately 100 nanometer. Nanoscale material. Oh, you skip, skip this introduction. You go, go, go for your work. Okay. Start it. Yes, sir. Yeah. You go for your work. Next. You skip it. Next slide. My. My aim and work is to prepare the retinal nanoparticle by co precipitation method. To study its structural morphology and vibrational studies. The techniques used for the characterization studies were XR, FTR, E dash, and the sum. Nice. You continue, continue. The synthesis and retinal nanoparticle by co precipitation method. Starting material is lead nitrate and sodium tungsten dihydrate. Uh, these two uh, material five minutes stirrer and A and B added and uh, uh, thirty minutes stirrer and the sample food uh, last filter and the grinder. Such studies are XRD spectrum. The XRD spectrum is the protagonist relay type structure. Yeah. And the XRD pattern, the diffraction peak 112 and 204 is much longer than other peaks. Uh, the lattice parameter A equal to 5.4516 and the volume 3.39.45. Uh, the particle average particle size 56 nanometers. The FPR spectrum. Uh, it's a uh, longer peak seven eight six centimeter uh, is the uh, O W O and symmetric switching vibration. Uh, this switching vibration is the tetragonal atom catches and the isolated from the one another and the number of O ions surrounded by the C B ion eight. Sir, can you hear me? Ah, yeah, oh, you can you continue. Yeah, as the uh, CN sticking mode is around at uh, 1052 cm and the OH sticking mode around at 3441 cm. The EDAC spectrum, the EDAC spectrum, uh, O peak uh, uh, around. Sorry. The EDAC spectrum uh, shows the PBWO um, element, uh, element uh, is occurs. Uh, the table uh, regarded the highest proposition of CU and W and O. The highest proposition is copper. Morphology studies. The morphology studies of uh, images is so. Uh, is the hexagonal shape with average size 160 nanometer. The figure show. Yeah, arena. okay. Asha, your uh, presentation is very good. Actually, uh, I, the work is you have in, in the initial stage. Uh, actually, in your uh, FTIR, FTIR, you, sh you showed something that is OH peak. How it is present OH? Actually, you have metal under something. Yeah? Uh, sir, mm. what's more? 340, 3441, you have OH stretching is there. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, how it is possible? Then water, water molecule means you have, how you have net OH OH per peak. Actually, that's a H2O peak in Sina. So water molecule generally it will be broad and big will be available. It is a very sharp peak in this case. Mm -hmm. How it is OH stretching? 
Yeah, and and also you should be very careful in type typing something. Uh, some some spelling mistakes are also there. Mm. The initial stage you are there, and you have to care, take care of your uh, spelling and everything. And okay. the next thing is a 786 centimeter inverse. You have mentioned O W O oh, and exactly. symmetry. Uh, actually, the metal oxidation bond will be will not be present in a beyond a 600 limit. It will be uh, the lower case only, and it is also heavy element in the, that is tungsten. How uh -huh. you it is mentioned in the F seven hundred and eighty six? So which reference you have mentioned? Please you go and uh, check again. Ah, huh? uh, yes. One second. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other candidate is willing to present? No. So please wait for a few minutes, sir. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Sir. Okay. Sir. 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 பேங்க் போயிட்டு வந்தீங்களா எப்ப கிடைக்குமா சாட்டு சொன்னீங்களா okay yeah it's the can you see the slide sir sabita are you hearing yes sir yes sir i'm here uh, yeah okay what is your op number 268 68 okay you okay, start your presentation Please share your screen. Yes, sir. I'm sharing. So, can you see the screen? No, it's not visible. Oh, Just wait. Please once again share it. Okay, sir.
sir any problem sir sir screen is not sharing any others any other presenters no oh, no no actually this is i think sabida is the last one sir i am trying to share ah dr rajesh did you make to sabida as his host okay sir okay okay sir now okay already updated sir okay ah uh. yeah yes sir okay. oh. still screen is not coming yes sir oh. मैम रेणुका मैम सर कैन यू सी द स्क्रीन So can you see the screen sir? It is not visible. No, it's not visible. Okay. Your um, name on name only is presenting. Actually okay, he was sir. sharing some other thing. Okay sir. I don't know how to share this. Actually I'm not uh, able to log in in my laptop so I'm trying to log in in my phone. Okay. In the Zoom there is a left uh, left hand some uh, options will be there. share your screen oh ah put the mari ah okay sabida you start your presentation ये 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 नो 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 अभी भी कूड़ा होगा सबिदा आर यू हाई री हियरिंग सबिदा मैम यार बस तुम कूड़ा नहीं तो ओके कूड़ा ओके सबिदा सबिदा मैम Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Only yes. host will share the screen, uh, ma'am. I'm getting that option. I mean. Yes, Doctor Rajesh. Sir, ma'am. Sir, next person will call. So once again, you make make her as a host. Otherwise, we will start presentation. The rest. Ah, yeah, Sabida. Now share your screen. Okay. Anyway, you 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 present your uh, talk. Sabida. Sabida, first unmute it. Is there any any anybody to present the? Oral presentation. Uh, sir, can I? Ah, uh, yeah, you 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 present it first. Okay, sir. You are Raj. You are oral yes, number. Ah, uh, two sixty eight, sir. Two sixty eight. Yes, sir. One minute. Abida also is same number. What is two sixty eight? You are Raj. Okay, okay uh, you are Raj. You start it. You present it. Okay, I can present. You are Raj. Ah, uh, sir, uh, working on it, sir. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, can okay. You... okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Ah, uh, can you just see my screen, sir? Yes. Okay. 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 Ah, uh, 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Yuvraj from Madras Vishnu College, and I'm here to present a talk among you on, a, on the topic revolutionary gyroscopic precision. So what is it? A gyroscopic precision is basically a tendency of a rotating object to maintain the orientation of its rotation. Uh, it is also called as the torque-induced precision, and it's basically like uh, it considers that you, you have an object which is rotating, and if you exert an external tangential force on it, uh, it precises in the opposite direction to ensure that its orientation maintains in the same direction. Uh, it's also by, the reason why it's called as gyroscopic precision is because it was found by Leon Foucault while he was working with the gyroscopes at sea to ensure that the platform doesn't shake a lot and we ensure that uh, the objects are placed intact irrespective of the wobbling which happens at sea. Uh, there are a lot of examples where we actually have uh, gyroscopic precision in play. Um, in order to understand it, let's go with the uh, basic examples. The very act of riding a cycle is because of gyroscopic precision. Um, it's obvious that you can't balance a cycle which is in uh, stationary, whereas you can uh, balance a cycle which is in motion. The reason why it happens is that while the you object is in motion, Yes, sir. You, are, you skip this and, and you can go to your work. Shortly okay, present sir. your uh, talk. Um, okay, so gyroscopic precision has been uh, revolutionary in almost all the fields, like uh, it involves in anti air gun missiles, where it basically it involves in reducing the weight. Um, it uh, helps us in identifying the mass distribution between stuff. So let's see the scopes where gyroscopic precision is actually used. Like uh, we can use gyroscope, uh, gyroscopic precision in actually assisting the motor disabled persons to walk. Like if they can't have all their body weight on the legs, uh, we could have uh, gyroscopic uh, enabled chimbals to ensure that they don't have uh, effort on their legs. So this way we can help them to walk again with less effort. It also be it also can be helped in space explorations where, uh, in case of its moon, uh, we need more gravity to stay still. With the presence of these gyroscopic precisions, we can uh, actually induce artificial gravity, which ensures astronauts can work um, Earth like uh, no, they have the gravity like Earth, and they can work. And similarly, it can also be used as anti gravity wheels in heavier planets where gravity will be high, so we can reduce the gravitational effect on our legs. So similarly, uh, the gyroscopic precisions, the gyroscopic chimbals can be used in uh, robots where uh, we have this, um, like they can do odd stocks. Even MIT Boston Dynamics, the spot robot has uh, gyroscopic chimbals, which helps them actually to uh, um, interact with um, obstacles and stuff. And also the gyroscopic precision can be used in studying about the mass distribution. It can be used by having a, a crystal to be revolved in, uh, under a uh, magnetic field where it can be revolved. And by producing tangential forces over it, we can understand how the mass distributions between the lattices uh, work. So uh, that tends to talk, yeah. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you, okay. Raj. For your nice okay, presentation. Sir. Okay, thank you. Sabida, are you ready? Yes, sir, I'm ready. Dr. Rajesh, can you make uh, Sabida as host once again? Yeah. Now present, present. So can yeah, you see the director near the in the other near the help on no 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 um, my present work is on DNA interaction study of mixed ligand copper complexes by using cyclic altimetry. Not only metal complexes, you can study the interactions of any compound with the DNA by using cyclic altimetry precisely. Actually, my work is I want to make a metal complex of biologically important ligands 
Yes, sir. I am willing to ready to. Uh, arose much interest because of their wide therapeutic and catalytic applications. Actually, copper. You can see the copper complex. Anti cancer. It is very good anti cancer drug. It is having a uh, ten folds higher activity than the platinum complex. Cis platin, a well known cancer drug. And these copper complexes affect only unhealthy cells, cancer cells, by leaving a healthy cells. Okay, because metal complexes have a more leophilic nature than the pure drugs. Pure drugs won't be a leophilic when we compare to metal complexes. So this facilitates transportation of the drug across the cell membrane. Normal drugs cannot cross the cell membrane. Once these metal complexes, once these drugs got complexed with the metals, they have an ability to cross the cell membrane act properly. The metal ions easily lose electrons from the familiar elements or metallic state to form positively charged ions, which tend to be soluble in biological fluids. Metal ions are electron deficient. Most Sabida? biological molecules such as simple ions, protein. Sabida, Sabida, yeah. will you go, go, go for your yes. work? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So, so metal complexes will give you more uh, ability and capability of a drug to reach the region. We are going to find that DNA binding affinity, that ability of metal complexes by using cyclic voltammetric study. This is my present study. Here you can see the Cyclic ultrametric. Cyclic ultrametric is a useful method for the evaluation of DNA binding parameters. Owing to the resemblance between electrochemical and biological reactions, the redox mechanisms taking place in the body and at an electrode flow similar principles. It can be assumed that the peak potential and the current intensity of the complex changes with the nucleic acid interactions. The change in peak height of the complex in addition of CTDNA can be used for the determination of binding constant of the complex with DNA. This is a cyclic ultogram of my complex. Here you can see the two peaks. This is the reduction peak and here we have an oxidation peak. Once this ligand or once this complex is binding with DNA, you can see the decrease in the oxidation and reduction peaks. The extent of the reduction of these peaks will be directly proportional to the binding affinity of the molecule. This can be calculated by using by using this formula, okay? This is the concentration of DNA. Slowly we'll add 10 millimolar, 10 micromolar of DNA to the so a little fast. Yes, sir. Complex so that you can see the decreasing pattern. Slowly it will decrease. I mean, uh, reduction potential will decrease because there is an interaction between the DNA. This can be calculated by using the formula 1 by concentration of DNA equals to K into 1 minus A divided with 1 by I minus I naught minus K. If you plot a graph between 1 by DNA versus 1 by I, I minus I naught, you will get the inter intercept. That intercept gives you the binding constant of your complex. These are the different cyclic voltograms of my compound. Clearly, you can see by adding the DNA, you can decrease the reduction and oxidation peaks. Okay, there is a decrease in a reduction and oxidation peak. If we plot a graph between DNA versus uh, 1 by DNA versus 1 by I minus I, uh, 1 minus I by I naught, you have an intercept. This intercepts give you the binding constant. Okay, these are my ligands. This is my complex. You can see the binding constant and these have been compared with the UV method and we have a correlated values and we can say that this is very useful 
and simple technique to measure the biological activity of any molecule thank you thank you nice uh, go to your previous slide yes, the last sir. last sample uh, the yes, intrinsic sir. binding constant is 4.34 in your uv yes whereas sir. in the, your your method it is 0.94 very large difference large so difference sir. actually we are going to and it is also the... in the power also is very very de de yes, deviant so how, this how is intrinsic binding constant sir this is different binding constant apparent binding constant so magnitudes are different we cannot compare this because this is intrinsic binding constant that will is a apparent binding constant okay am i clear sir so we cannot compare we can uh, see the pattern here okay same kind of pattern thank you sir okay okay nice thank you thank you sir okay any other candidate willing to present any other participants is ready to present Dr. Rajesh, dear participant, any others present? Yes. Any other present? Yes. No. Yes, sir. Sir, can you? Ah, yes. Really thank you for your uh, wonderful support and courage. Uh, thank you, thank you, Rajesh, for your uh, nice opportunity to evaluate the participants. Thank, thank you, sir. thank you, organizers. Thank you, thank you, Amar. Well, Shall I leave now? Yes, sir. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, sir. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have come to the end of the session. May I request Dr. Rajesh? First, I thank the Almighty God for everything is successful. A warm good evening to everyone. It is my pleasure to all the one day next week conference at one of the material science. First, I thank our management for permitting us to conduct such a conference. I extend my hearty thank to our principal Dr. Nagarajan, who has lent his support in all our endeavors. And I thank to its cell phone and director, Dr. A.M. Dori Mabin. I extend a carpet thank to the invited great speakers of the today conference, Dr. Ayan Udayan, Principal Scientist in New Delhi, Dr. Sangar Narayan, Associate Professor Karikri Agapa University, Dr. A. Damarabel from Department of Condensation Matter Physics, Bombay IAP, Dr. Rita Jan Grosser, head of the Department of Theoretical Physics, Adras University. We are extremely grateful to thank them for readily consenting our invitation and present talk on the theme of conference. I happily will happy thank to my chairperson who are the analyzer to present us, Dr. Yaman Ariwanadam from Chennai Anna University, Dr. Mutsanil Pandian SSN Research Center, Department of Physics, SSN Engineering College, Chennai, Dr. Nuru Bodhan, Principal and Editor of Physics, Pajapas College, Dr. R. Amish Pabba, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, Paridas University, Dr. Yam Asuk, Professor, Department of Physics, NIT, Trichrapalli, Dr. G. Ramalinga, Assistant Professor, Department of Nanoscience Technology, Quantum Material Research, Alagappa University, Dr. Gajam G. Murai, Associate Professor, Head of the Department of Agarastra, Abhraadi University, Dr. K. Mohan Raj, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Monomene Sutra University, Tirnal Veli, Dr. R. J. Kalyana Sundar, Assistant Professor, Salem Periyar University, Professor Chris M. Lucy, Associate Professor, Indian University of Technology, Bombay IIT, Dr. Sanjay J. B. Magatwas University, Karnataka, Dr. Arbudan, Professor of Chemistry, North East Hill University, Meghalaya, and Dr. Ilangavan, as well as we are in the Virtue Pia, the Vindra Ponala, what are you doing? Dr. Yes, one of the best manager, Central Palana Science and Engineering, 
Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, Karnataka, Dr. L. Kumar Dev, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, Madhya Pradesh University, and Dr. Kanal, Dr. D. Gita, Associate Professor, Nano Science and Technology, Siddham Prabhu, Nano University. Thank you all. Done. And a special thanks to Dr. D. Narayan Sir for the solving his and all our effort and activities. Um, a really hearty thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Subhasini, ma'am, the Department of English, Kamrati College, for valuable and more effort this conference support. And the Faculty of Chemistry Department and Business, uh, Business Department, my dear students, thank you, one and all, thank you. Dear yeah, participant, thank you for support and uh, this conference. Thank you. Thank you, Varunal. Certificate on the The presenter certificates uh, will be uh, post and uh, participant certificate. Google generate. Okay, thank you to all.